Welcome back everybody and this is part three of whittling a one by one little man out of basswood stick. This is the fella we had. Um, all I've done extra since the last video is I've just put a couple of nicks in his trousers just to break it up a little bit. I've gone around on his feet. Just taking a couple of nicks on his feet just to save us a bit of time. The only other thing we can do at this stage is we could uh, add a, some extras to his hair. So we could, again, experimenting a little bit with angles of the camera again. Let's see where we are with it. So get a bit of movement into his hair. Create a little bit more of a some straight lines here. Now our pencil becomes our friend here. And we're gonna go from here. the parting we've got here, moving across, moving across, a little bit windswept up and over the top, over the top all coming from this parting. And like I said before, we won't worry too much about the back for this video piece. Some of them like this chap we have done around the back. Some of them for practice I don't, and I just leave them. So this was the one of the guys we were talking about. And this was one of the other guys we we're trying to replicate. And they were one by one basswood sticks, which we can get quite easily in the UK, quite difficult to get basswood in the UK and we end up relying on online. And the concept of what we've done so far with faces is the same as most of the little faces I do. So just to give you an idea, I do some busts. So there's one little Victorian chap and his friend. Done in the same, same way as we've already been doing. We have Little sailor chap, same concept. We have this little fella, but much more angular, more of a sort of a flat plane style. We have the old train driver. What else have we got here? We got ah, we got the old Sarge. Old Sarge done in the same sort of fashion. We got a Peaky Blinder. What else have we got here? Oh, this one come out well with a paint. Another army chap. All one by one. All in the same sort of style as we've been doing with this character. So we've drawn on his lines. We try and stay in focus in the camera, so I may pause every now and again. The camera is right on my chin today. So all we're going to do is take very shallow cuts along our pencil line. Which is why I was saying the pencil it will be our friend on here. And I can pull this one down. to make sure the knife is nice and sharp. Curl that around. I mean, you don't have to do the cuts of the hair. You could leave it as we had it. Of course, if you want to do a few of these, you can play around with hairstyles as much as you like. Could have even had a bit of hair coming down on the head. Sometimes on the hair, you, if you've got a good, if you plan it right, you can finish a piece really quite nicely. Just go in the top. Now I tend to prefer to use a knife because I like the concept of just using 
one tool. Which is what I tend to do more of, which would be classified as whittling. But I guess you could go quite a bit quicker with a V-tool. The only thing with a V-tool is I don't think you get it quite as accurate. So say for example, what we really want to do is create some decent shadows. So what we can do is just sort of undercut on that hair. Again, I won't worry about the back because this is for tutorial reasons only. And we do the same on the top. We can spend some good time on the hair. We'll finish a piece quite nicely. Or we could we could get a a veto if we were in a rush, or we could just score with a veto. Always try to get the forehead back under the hairline. So now we've given a, a little bit of hair on the sides here. We can just take, start off with just little nicks, just to break this up a little bit. Camera's now really quite close. So it's quite easy for me to go offline. That's what can happen. It's not taking too big a chunk off of that, so that's fine. Let's modify that. Concentrating now because I just uh, took too big a chunk that I really wanted to off of there, but we've uh, we've recovered that. And the same on same on the other side. Again, small cuts. Otherwise, you'll do what I just done on the other side. Take too big a chunk out. side's not as clean as I would like. Okay, so there we go. There's our one inch stick man. Looking like he's ready to go to the office. So let's talk about a bit of paint. So, uh, 
front of me. A little pallet. I have a little tub of water. Put that. And then we will fill one of these. Let's go for one, two, one here, a little pinky. A little water. And we're going to do some flesh. So I need a little speck of red. That's too dark a red. Where's the red disappeared to? Uh, turn out this magenta. Oh, red is too cool. I'm going to have to use my more expensive red. So I usually use the cheap acrylic paints. I've got knocking all around this type of thing. That's a magenta, so that's not the colour I was looking for. I do do a little bit of painting with figurines as well. And I have my game paint on me and I do have a red there, but I'm just going to touch this on the side. That's far too much, which is why I touched it on the side. And all I'm going to do is take a dot of this. Not very much. And mix it in with the water. Now, red especially tends to overcolor, so you really only need a very, very small amount. You want it to be watery like that. Let's get our fella back. And then with that, we're just gonna lightly brush him all over. You don't need to go on the eyeballs, obviously. And the red is, no, is quite a powerful color. Don't always use the red Sometimes I go for uh, a terracotta style colour. But if you water the red down a lot, then we can get a nice sort of fleshy type of colour. It's not too overpowering. this to dry before we come back and give it another coat if that's what we want to do or could you leave it as it is to give it a little bit of a rustic look or if you've got a nice grain on your wood I've seen a couple recently where some of you guys have got some really nice grain you might want that grain just to pop in which case don't darken it And depending on what you're painting and where we're painting, depend on how thick we want that uh, paint, how much we want it to be watered down. So, same again with another one. for uh, let's go for a sky blue shirt so I do the same again side <coughs> sky blue color as is the opposite to red takes a little bit of seeing so let's take a bigger bigger chunk into the water mix it in just to demonstrate what I've just said there uh, let's just try it really water down. See, if you had a really nice grain, which I don't have on this cheap bit of basswood, then that might be something you do that and then you go back again once it's dried and put it on again. You just get that nice tint of blue, but you're actually looking at the a nice bit of grain as well. Um, this piece was not a good piece of um, basswood. I think it was just in my pile of sticks, I'm not even too sure. Probably something I've got off of eBay or possibly Amazon. Let's just mix it up a bit more. It's a bit better. So I'm just avoiding the tie a little bit because we're going to go with a different colour on that one.
could have done this with my guy in a white shirt, but I've already got a white one in a white. Got one in a white and one in a peach coloured shirt already. So let's go. Sky blue. is how I would tend to do it and then when it dries off a little bit I'd come back and I'd give it another coat but for the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to thicken it up once more and go straight away job can bring a carving to life and a really bad paint job can pretty much ruin one so I would suggest unlike me right now you just take your time to select the right colors and take as long as you possibly can let the colors dry between hand coats I don't tend to put any cedar or anything on my carvings when I start like this because I quite like that nat nat natural look. I used to. I used to use um, boiled linseed oil before I'd start painting. I found it darkened the wood. And I also found it kind of changed the colours that I had. It might just be me, but that's how I found it. I quite like painting directly onto the wood and then sealing it afterwards. As I said with the two I've already done, one, uh, this fella, I sealed with uh, a feed and wax solution, and this fella, I sprayed with like a lacquer paint. Camera's probably not picking it up, but one's got that, this, this fella's got a bit of a shinier look to it. This fella's got a little bit more of a natural look, I suppose. So he's looking. Now we're going to go for a let's give him some grey hair. We'll go thicker on the grey. Again, I've got my expensive paints to hand. They're no different from a normal cheap set, so don't think I'm using any special paint. I'm not, it's just the paints I use for my figurines. paint usually I have it really close to my face so I can see it and I've got the camera right in front of my face now so I'm trying to concentrate and keep it in picture when I'm painting
want that paint to be quite watered down. There we go. Okay, so that red solution that we put on his face. I mean, that's not dry yet, but that's still probably a little heavy. Could have probably gone lighter. Moving on, what should we give him on his trousers? Let's go a little bit heavier on the trousers. Let's go for a burnt umber. We're gonna make that relatively heavy. Up, making sure there's no lumps and bumps in there. Okay, I'm gonna go for the trousers now. Concentration. Okay. some brown trousers. Again, as that dries, I would probably touch it up and go darker again. Um, a neat little trick you can do is go a little bit uh, less diluted and then just rub here, 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 and into the creases here, uh, possibly just here and here, here and here, if you wanted to just Give a bit of a darker shade. That's that. Um, I would do his shoes in black. I don't have many paintbrushes in front of me. I'm gonna do that last. Um, let's discuss tie colors. Where are we gonna go with tie colors? Let's go for a, let's go for, just go for a darker blue, shall we? So. Oh, running low on this one. I want that tie to be contrasting a little bit, so I don't want that to be too, too watered down. So just for the purpose of making that a little bit more usable. about to uh, pick up his briefcase and trot off to work. Finding this tricky with the camera right in front of me. I've got the shakes here. I've got the arm wrapped around the pole of the camera. select the right size uh, brush that would help on it <clears throat> should hold 
should have brought a selection of brushes with me. I didn't. Never mind, we're going to have to make do with this one. I must remember when I'm doing any painting ones in the future to play some music in the background. Yeah. I can't talk and paint at the same time. So there's this nice uh, blue tie. Okay, let me just clean my uh, clean my brushes. that back very lightly, put that in that water, mix it up, and that should be quite a lightish solution. And then I'm going to rub that just into the black, into the fold of his hair there. Soup in quite quickly. So, first, when you do it, you'll think, Ah, no, just rip out. We haven't. Just gonna help the lines be more visible. Break up all that grey. Just make that hair uh, pop a little bit. What's that? I have a very nice uh, terracotta style colour, which I like. And I use very small amounts of it. Uh, usually, again, watered down just a little bit. that uh, usually just around the ears just give the ear a slightly better color
not so new, is it? I'm not bombing it. can do that black solution if you want to, if you're very careful, it's just darken up some of the creases, just make that pop, there is no necessary need to do it, it's a bit of a form of an, a way of antiquing I suppose, or avoiding antiquing, but allowing the creases to just pop a little bit. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can see that. Just creating shadow where shadow would be. Also helps to see some of the lines and contours. Let's do this guys. Shoes while we're here. Doing the shoes in a deep black, almost blackout pot, really. Simply because I don't want to go back over again. But if you want that look, just lighten it up. You can almost buff it off a little bit to see some of the wood underneath. This is where we are with this little guy now. It's still got some heavy black on it. I'm just going to lightly brush. Across the top of his hair, just to make that pop a little bit more. Could 
do this with a white view. If I had to make him a little bit older looking. Perhaps you could do that as well. Then we need to use some white for his eyes. Now, because of the camera angle, I'm probably going to have to bring this away from the camera. Now we don't water down. I didn't get the paint out at all. Some cheaper paint over there, actually. How about that? Two pound for a big pot. I was a singer, I could sing to you now, but I'm not. And I don't think you want to hear me sing. Eyes nice and sunk. Uh, what we did forget was his eyebrows. So let's take a bit of that black over there. Bit of white. Do, 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 do. So now we'll have to wait a second or two. And then when that's all dry, we can come back. We can do some more touches here and there if we wanted to. We need to put the black dots or his pupils in his eyes. We could touch a little bit of white uh, brushing across the top if we wanted to make him look a little bit older. And then we could put some wax on him to buff him up or we could spray him with a lacquer if we wanted to. We could. Could give him slightly redder um, nose and cheeks. Like a clean brush, Ben, that would help. That's too much. A little bit of a drinker. Wait for that to try a little bit. And we could. 
child. I wanted to steal that then. Oh, we've gone from a man who was ready to get up and go to work to a man who looks like he's had a hard day. Some of these colors will die down a little bit as it dries. Some of these colors looking a little bit darker on the camera than they are in, in the eye. I assume that's because it's where it's wet and where it's dry. The sideburn on the side of the hair. There we go. There's a man. Those that, those colours will dog down a little bit as he dries. I think I'll put the spots in his eyes. And uh, that is our, that is our one by one little fella. I'll put some dots on his tie and I'll give him a wax and then I will come back with one last shot of him. And then we're done. And then on to the next project. Thanks very much. See you later. So here he is, all painted up and finished, alongside his chums here. This is our one by one little basswood man. Still a little bit shiny, 
because they just finished putting some wax on him. There he is in all his glory. Hope it's worthwhile. Hope you enjoyed it. Who knows? I can have a collection of like my grumpy men. I don't know why all my guys come out grumpy looking. I think it might be a reflection of my soul. <laughs> hey, it's been fun. Till next time.